Well, it's that time again. It's time for another Bitcoin and crypto update for the month. We've just completed the month of August, got our monthly close in. The market is a little bit scared right now. September has historically been a down month for Bitcoin. Some people are afraid that the floor is just going to fall out from beneath us. So let's take a closer look at Bitcoin today and let's make some predictions about what we can expect. Now, as we begin September, the market is a little nervous because September has historically been a red month for Bitcoin. And let me move my hand here, but we can see last year that we had a 7% drop. The year before that, a 7% drop. 13 before that. So that's about what we're looking for. First, let me start off with some good news. Looking at this monthly chart does not look bad at all in my book. We closed August at the same point that we closed the month before in July and the month before in June. Okay, and that point was right at $20,000. We're holding that level very, very well. Now, I personally believe that the institutions are looking at Bitcoin as a base price or a fair market value price of around $20,000. It is my opinion this this will be our floor around the $20,000 area that we will just kind of bounce around in that area sideways for a very long time until we start going into the next bull market. That's my personal opinion. We'll just have to see if that plays out. But let me show you this. Follow me over here. Follow my cursor over here for a second. Do you see this line right here on the Ichimoku cloud, that very thin line going up before it starts thickening? That's a very positive sign. That is a sign of a movement up. So on the monthly, we've got some good, strong indications that we are coming to a stopping point where we could get a relief and quite possibly a move up, maybe even up to 40,000, just kind of looking what I'm seeing here on the monthly and going by the Ichimoku cloud. According to our timeline here with Ichimoku, I mean, we're looking up to next year, February, March, before we could even get to these levels of about 33,000. But going over what we got on the monthly, we have a falling wedge, which we've been over many times before at bullish pattern. We've just been waiting to break out. We haven't done that yet. But the great news is that we have not really lost our support here at 20,000. We keep regaining that. That's very positive, people. So let's keep that in mind as we go into September and while the bears are just crying for 10,000, 3,000, whatever they're crying for Bitcoin. My personal belief is that we already have the bottom in. Okay, but we I have to look at this, what if I'm wrong? Let's take the stance that, hey, the bottom's not in yet. We don't know. If Bitcoin does continue to fall, what will happen? What are our indicators saying? If we look at market cipher, we can see that we've still got money flow. It's been coming down, but it's leveling up. It's actually got an angle going to the upside. That's a good sign for me. The monthly VWAP is angled up. We've got some distance. We've still got some play to go here as far as, you know, down and sideways action goes on the monthly, but we're getting close to an area to print a green dot here. It may be November, maybe December, looking at the time frame. We're showing signs of bottoming. So whether we've hit the bottom already in the past, whether it was at a 17 and a half or whatever, or there's some more downside, we are closer to the bottom than we have been all year, okay? Now, looking at the RSI on the monthly, it's coming in at 42, which is low. And actually, if we take a closer look at this, we can see that the last time that we had a low on the RSI, it was 44 and this was January, 2019. We've currently dropped below that. We did a retest of that, dropped lower, and now it looks like the RSI could possibly be making a double bottom here around the 42% area. But what I really wanna draw your attention to as far as the RSI is, if we look where I, I took the section right here, where I drew my trend line, connected there to there, I've got my two touches, and if we look closely on the RSI from that part two, we've got hidden bearish divergence right here. See this? The price action goes from low to high. The indicator goes from high to low. That's what we've got going on here. But we've also got some hidden bearish divergence from this point right here, which was the uh, March 20 dump that we had here. It's angling up here on the price action. It is angling down on the RSI. Two instances of hidden bearish divergence. So this means that price will continue in the same direction. So we can expect a bounce going by the rules of divergence. Now, should price come down to this trend line in order for it to kick off? Possibly, definitely could happen. We are looking right around 13,000 if it came down to touch this trend line. This is our bottom trend line. If Bitcoin were to come and break this trend line, throw your hands up. There is nowhere else. We'd be breaking the rules there 
I would get out of Bitcoin because I would have no clue what to expect from there. Will we make it down that far? That's a good question. Will we do that? With the RSI being low and showing that divergence, we may not actually make it down that low. Take a look at the MACD, downward action, but look right here. We're starting to round off. We're coming to a slowing point. We're stopping. Things are getting slower, starting to turn around just ever so slightly. And what this tells me is that this is going to be the typical bear market. Notice over here in 2019, after we got our dump down, look how long that lasted. This is months. This is six, seven months, just slow fortress price action. All the FUD in the news, if you were around back then, everything's going to zero, going to $3,000, going to $2,000. That's what we can expect this time too. It's just gonna be a long, slow out process. And we're gonna to be told that the bottom's gonna drop, it's gonna to go to zero. We're gonna be told that it's gonna go up, shoot up. And really what it's gonna do is just go turtle speed within a range. So let me bring up something else about bear markets. Now there's another theory about that the lowest price that Bitcoin will get to is the price that was at when the halving happens. Now there is some merit to that theory because that's exactly what happened in 2019. The happening before that happened at around $3,000. Our price did drop in that bear market down to that price point. Now the point where it happened in Bitcoin at the last happening was right around $12,000, $13,000 area. So it is feasible that if we follow the happening rule, we could come back down to that area. And usually when it does that, it will reach that area and start climbing back up. Possible. That would invalidate the pie cycle theory of being 17,800-ish being our bottom. But if it happens, so be it. But that's something I want to bring up to you. That's an idea. So what is going on on this weekly chart? Good afternoon, everyone. Captain Lane speaking and wishing you a safe travels to your crypto destination. For those of you traveling with mice, please securely position your cursor over the light button below and right click with your favorite finger. For those with touchscreen devices, we ask that you gently press the thumbs up near the bottom of your screen. Thank you for choosing Road Dog Crypto. Please trade wisely and enjoy the rest of your video. Is that you in Now our RSI is coming in at 33, which is low, okay? It has actually bounced off that 30 level. I think we could actually get a little bit of relief rally. The MACD has actually got a cross. Now it's not a very strong cross, but it did cross and it is making some upward progression there. We'll have to see if it's still got more strength to continue up before crossing to the downside. Stochastics are starting to come down just a little bit. Our red dot was confirmed on Market Cipher last week, indicating some downward action. So the weekly is looking a little uh, so so. Nothing is jumping out on the weekly that is saying danger. And actually, we've still got thickness on the Ichimoku cloud, which means that eventually we're going to start making our way up toward that thickness. So things are showing me it's just kind of a slowdown period. I'm not seeing a sign of a bigger drop yet on anywhere on these charts on the bigger time frames. Other than this yellow X and this diamond on Market Cipher A, but that printed last week, we may have seen the brunt of that so far. Very possible. Uh, now we come to the daily to get a little bit more on our time frame here. What can we expect over this next week, two weeks, that kind of thing. That's where we can find it out. So on the daily, we are still, it's just like last week, not really much has changed. Now, given the fact that the RSI is sitting on 31, it has just bounced above the 30 level. Now, that's usually a buy signal. When we come down below, reach above the 30, buy signal for RSI. Market Cypher on the daily still has a confirmed green dot. Money flow is starting to edge up. VWAP is edging up. The Stochastics RSI are starting to gradually inch up. It's currently sitting at 30. So that is still at a low point. So we're looking at some upward potential here showing on the daily. Even the MACD on the daily is starting to show some upside, starting to swing toward that bullish cross there. And also we can see that our histogram is starting to level up there too. So we're showing some push to the upside on the daily. So if you want my honest opinion, I think that all the fear that you're seeing is with all the Mt. Gox FUD which could be something that we need to look into at a later time. It's not going to all unfold at once. It never does. And September being a bearish month in general, where would a 7% drop like it did last year? Where would that take us? We'll go where we started our monthly, about 20,000, come down 7%, $18,628. Not that terrible. Not even breaking what some of us think might be the low that we hit, which according to the Coinbase chart was 17587 
So with the chart, it's the same deal. We've got this measured move from this rising channel that we broke down out of, taking us down to around $18,686. That's confluence for what we just talked about, isn't it? What's going on with the Ichimoku? We got some green here, but then we got some red. Hmm. That indicates to me probably some sideways action because we will have to break up through this red. Now, when will that be? We don't start hitting the red until about late September. Now, if we use just a little bit of trend line magic, so I've got this trend line here just drawn out. Now, if we follow that down, you know, we could be looking about, about the 6th of September of maybe seeing around 18,600. So that's my prediction just based on the trend line here of possibly reaching that over the next few days by the, around the 6th of September, coming back and maybe even retesting this low because Bitcoin will need to solidify its bottom. Now, one other thing I want to bring up about this, let me go to a larger time frame just to clarify this. Now, I don't know if you remember, but everyone was saying, hey, we would not break down below 20. I was even of that thought too, because that would be breaking down below our last cycle high, right? Well, that's the wicks on that. If we go down here to the actual candle close on that on the weekly, $17,420. This is where we will take our little rectangle and we will draw a box connecting that candle close to that wick. And we're gonna draw this over. This is now our range, okay? This should be the area that we should not see Bitcoin dip below. This should actually be our bottom range. Never before has Bitcoin ever retraced down below its last all time high. Now, a lot of us are considering that as doing that because we're going by the wicks but we're not really looking at the candle close. And as we know, most indicators are calculated on candle openings and candle closes. So I think that that area holds actually a lot of weight. We've not broken it yet. And so in my mind, until we actually break the bottom that we reached before, why even entertain going lower? Let's break that low. And once we do that, then we can start, you know, kind of crapping our pants and, and talking about $10,000, $13,000. That's just my personal views on it. I am not seeing anything yet that will take us there. I am just seeing some slow sideways movement. In my personal opinion, over the next six to nine months, this little kind of bluish area right here, this will probably be the range that we trade between 17.5 and on up to about $25,000, $26,000. If this bear market plays out like the others, which why shouldn't it? Slow sideways action for months and months. Getting up high enough to make you hopeful and getting down low enough to make you fearful. That's what I see going on for Bitcoin and until next year, quite honestly. So in, in my opinion, yeah, we probably got some more downward action. We do have that measured move. They usually do work out. I would say over this next week or so, especially around the sixth, we should probably be there. And then we can start making our recovery back. If we don't, if we go lower, well, we'll have to look at it then. That will kind of change the whole ball game a little bit. But I do not honestly foresee us breaking this low of 17.5. And if we do, we'll address it then. But until we get there, why do we need to worry about it? This is an excellent time in my strategy for dollar cost averaging. It's an excellent time to start stocking up on some altcoins that you really want. Those ones that you missed out on in that bull cycle. Great time to start picking those things up. There is easily potential to get a 10x gain on the prices that are out there currently. Even if you have to go through a little bit of a drawdown for a year, you can recover from this. So. If you make some mistakes in your trading, in your spot trading now, if you buy too high, I would recommend that you be a little forgiving on yourself because you've got room to make some mistakes here. Now, we definitely don't want to buy those high prices. We want to kind of wait. We kind of want to wait until we get these big, scary pullbacks and we want to buy when it's scary to buy. When there's blood on those streets and you just have to make yourself press that buy button because you're just telling yourself the price is still going down, it's still going down. Hit that buy button. I know it's scary to do that. If when we get in those situations, like what happened here with this big drop, man, I live for those moments. See the things crash and just start nibbling up some of that stuff.
But since the weekend is upon us and it will be a Labor Day weekend, let's go down to the four hour, kind of see what we got going on in this very short term. Right off the bat, we got a green dot on market cyber telling us that we could expect some upside. Ichimoku's got the red cloud there. If we break above this trend line, that's what I'm looking for. We can retest and get a little rally to the upside, maybe get some relief. Maybe start seeing some areas around 23,000. Let's just go ahead and take a measured move on this part. I'm doing a little shortcut here. And yeah, that takes us up right around 23,329. I know that there's a lot of FUD stories out there. I know that the sentiment is starting to come down just a little bit, but I'm telling you, this is the accumulation area and this is where the smart money is building up their bags of Bitcoin. And this is where we as retail traders need to be following them and doing that also, in my opinion. Now that's what I'm going to do, not necessarily what you have to do. I'm just not scared about the bottom falling out of Bitcoin. If Bitcoin falls, I will be skipping through these exchanges like a little kid in a candy shop, just grabbing this and grabbing that and grabbing this and grabbing that. And I'm going to have a ball with it. That's the mindset we've got to have. We can't trade this market in fear. So my final two cents worth on Bitcoin, even for the short term, even for the weekend as we go this, even as we go into Labor Day and get that first and second week of September out of our way here, I think it's looking good. Now we may come down and we probably likely will get that around September 6th, 18,600. On the flip side, we may just decide to break out and go to the upside and we break this trend line and head on up to 23,000. One of those two things is what I'm kind of seeing. Now taking a look at the dollar on the weekly, it looks strong as heck. Okay, Ichimoku Cloud is just trailing up. We got a green dot on Market Cipher for the weekly. Trailing up still in this upward channel here. This is the part that makes me nervous. This is what we got a clue in on. Now let's go to a shorter term time frame and talk about the dollar really quick. So the dollar has broken market structure. It broke it here, came down, went outside of the channel doing a bear trap came back into the channel, which is very bullish, which may be what pushes us up toward the top. What we got to watch out for, okay. Since it broke market structure, it did a retest. I'm not expecting it to go above this line. I'm expecting it to get rejected. Now it's possible that it may ride this line on up here to the 1618 before it finally does take its rejection down. But if it breaks above this trend line, especially if it does a retest on it, it's going to shoot up crazy. That's what I do not want to see. Now, important for altcoins looking at total two, looking on the weekly, red dot here, Stochastics RSI is coming down. And we've also got some hidden bearish divergence right here on the RSI. So that's a little concerning for altcoin. We, we could probably see some big drops coming in the altcoins over the next week or so, but that is a good time to find some good deals. Taking a closer look on the daily, Broken market structure. Let's take the measured move here and put it where we did the breakout. Measured move comes down here. We could potentially see crypto total market cap come down to the 500 area. Keep your eye out for that. However, it could also be kind of doing a little bit of a retest, probably up to this orange trend line here, 603. Maybe come up and retest this line here. Got green on the Ichimoku, but when it's coming through the green, it's usually always going to the downside. So I'm expecting altcoins to take a little bit of a hit, which just means, hey, better prices for us, right? So take your profits when you get a chance to in altcoins. MACD on the daily, uh, still a little bearish, trying to push bullish. Stochastics are starting to head up. We might get a little relief here, but I would definitely look into taking some profits if you can, just to hedge against a possible or more than likely drop coming over the next few weeks down to this measured move area. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. If you've got any coin requests, if you'd like to, me to take a little deeper dive into any of the altcoins, by all means, hit me up in the comments. I'll be more than happy to do that for you. I'll be having some altcoin videos out soon and also some more chart school videos for those of you that want to kind of brush up on your TA or just kind of beef it up a little bit. So the chart school series, the 100 series goes over technical analysis and then I'm starting a new 200 series which focuses more on trading, how to manage these trades, how to enter these trades and trading psychology, all the things that you really need to know. TA is one element of it, which is life-changing. The other side of that coin is trade management, risk management, and managing your emotions. And we're gonna start getting into that heavy too. It is a great time to be digging our hands into this market and start building these positions because that bull market's coming and we can make the life-changing 
gains. Till next time, my name is Lane, your Crypto Road Dog, signing off. Be blessed and be positive. And always remember, even when the market gets scary, even as we dump a little bit in September, you still got this, baby. You're going to be all right. Hello, friends. Bobby Joe Rumblemaker right here telling you about the opportunity of a lifetime. Are you trying to find financial freedom by trading and investing in them their cryptocurrencies? But are you having a hard time being profitable making them winning trades? Well, you can get all that knowledge and a whole lot more just by watching the Crypto Chart School playlist over here at the Road Dog Crypto Channel. You just go right down here where it says Chart School. You click that full playlist and voila, they got all the knowledge right there and they're adding to it every week. So if you want to be profitable, right there you can go. And it's all for a like and a subscribe till you get all the answers you need over at the Road Dog. Happy trading, y'all.